Sebastian Gorka joins me now, along with uh, our own Ed Henry with us tonight. Gentlemen, good to have you both on. Sebastian, I want to start. Uh, the New York Times admitting its mistake, um, which I, was just unfathomable the way the media handled this hospital bombing uh, from last week, the explosion outside of Gaza Hospital last week. The Times published an editor's note acknowledging it should have taken more care with the initial presentation, been more explicit about what information could be verified. The fact that all of the media just relied on Hamas for what had happened here when, when Hamas clearly had an agenda to lie, uh, and now they're trying to backtrack from it. Sebastian. Well, yeah, they're, they're backtracking, but not really. I mean, one little correction doesn't change the fact that these people talk about militants. These aren't militants. These aren't freedom fighters. These are diabolical terrorists. And, and the, then the other journalist who was ratioed to Helen back yesterday, I think he's with the New Yorker, who said, oh, I'm sorry. Um, there's, yes, there were decapitated, headless baby infant bodies, but that doesn't mean that Hamas decapitated them. That's actually a real tweet that's still up there that, you know, because babies' heads just kind of organically can be lost sometimes. This is the insanity. We are dealing with dark, dark forces. You know, this. these are the people in service of, you know, a dark, dark force. And then what is the mainstream line media doing? Having their back, covering for them. It's amazing. Eddie, we had a U.S. Senate delegation in Israel over the weekend. There was a very interesting moment when our own uh, Daniel Cohen, our correspondent in Jerusalem, uh, sparred with Lindsey Graham uh, over whether to condemn the radicals in Congress. Take a look at this. It starts at home. And, and I'd like to ask any Democrat senator here that would like to speak to Rashida Tlaib. She still has a tweet up condemning Israel for a hospital attack. We are here together not to talk about the problems at home which are many. It's a fair I've question, I've got my Senator. own view of what to say. You're Please, not going to screw this up. I'm not trying to screw it Get up. Get this guy out of here. Now, let I me tell here. you. I'm an Israeli. I want an answer to the question. Please. I'm an American. And I am too. And I believe in free speech. I don't believe what the squad has to say Thank at you. all. But I came here with Democrats and Republicans to let everybody in the world know don't judge every Democrat by the squad and don't judge every Republican by some of the things you hear. And I'm sorry, my friend, I probably shouldn't have said it, but my nerves are raw right now. Kind of a wild moment there, Ed. Uh, is nuts. He was talking about the First Amendment and that he's trying to shut down our colleague. It's outrageous. This is why a lot of conservatives think that Lindsey Graham is a rhino. Uh, and he's got it wrong. This is not about Democrats and Republicans coming together. As I listened to Sebastian and, and the horrors that played out in Israel with the children and others, this is a battle between good and evil. And there are many in the mainstream media and maybe even in the U.S. Senate. Uh, who do, do not understand that. And uh, when people tell you who they are, you have to believe them. You've heard that saying, and I want to listen yeah. to your monologue. Uh, think about that letter. At the early on in the Biden administration, over 500 Biden campaign staffers uh, and Democrat operatives signed an open letter accusing Israel of apartheid and standing with the Palestinians and basically standing with Hamas. And look inside the government, where Sebastian used to work in the National Security Council. You have the top intel aide, as Kash Patel was uh, revealing last week, who's got Palestinian sympathies uh, and is the one giving intel uh, to uh, President Biden to decide what goes to him and what doesn't and whatnot at the uh, National Security Council. There's an old photo of him that surfaced uh, accusing Israel again of apartheid. This is somebody inside the government. Uh, you've talked about Robert Malley, uh, Rob, yeah. uh, who was the Iranian envoy at the State Department. He's lost his security clearance. They won't tell us why. There's another Pentagon aide, by the way, uh, so for you go from the White House to state and then to the Pentagon, uh, who's got Iranian sympathies, allegedly gave intel to Tehran and has not lost his security clearance. Mm. This is your government. It's, t it's terrifying. And I, I want to play just really quick. Susan Collins, a uh, senator from Rhode Island, actually spoke to Newsmax right after that happened. Take a listen. listen. It's very hard for me to understand why a member of Congress or anyone would not condemn what Hamas has done, um, whether it's kidnapping little children or grandmothers or shooting down students who are engaged in a dance rally or going door to door and randomly killing people. 
Those should not be hard acts to condemn. Those are inhumane. Made a good point there. Sebastian, I want to I go to something here real quick. Right now, Israel doesn't have the broad Western support um, that it once enjoyed, uh, especially here in this country, which is a really sad reality. You know, I, I, I truly believe it has so much to do with, with what we've stirred up in this country over the last five years, which is all of this self-loathing. I think as a way of appeasement that the left is trying to hold on to its voting base, uh, they've basically just had to say, you know what, we really are a terrible country and, and you know, we, we, we've done horrible things and, and this country's not fair and it's awful. Uh, and we've just had this suicidal rhetoric in a lot of ways uh, that's been so damaging. And I think that that's spurned into this thing and it, it's become entirely anti-Western. And that's why you see the pictures here. You have so many people in this country who hate our country because our political class has told them that this country is awful. We are living in the most perverse of times, Rob. Just think about this. This nation is now being run by people who hate this nation. And not just this nation, but Western civilization. They hate themselves. They have white guilt, whatever it is. And they project that. Think about what we did. We were the most philo-Semitic administration since 1948. We stood shoulder to shoulder with our friends, whether it's Japan in Asia, whether it's the Brits in the UK, whether it's Israel in the Middle East. Now, who do they side with? Who does the Biden administration side with? Our enemies, whether it's Iran, whether it's China, look at the deals that Hunter got, or whether it's the people who are killing babies and grandmothers. They hate themselves, and so they project onto others. And who, who do they actually support? The people who hate America. That's why we need President Trump back in the White House. Ed, final thoughts to you. Yeah, well, look, it was 50 cent uh, over the weekend. You saw him on Instagram saying, Biden, get off the beach. We've got real problems. Yeah. When you've got a rapper telling you to get off the beach, uh, this administration is lost right now, Rob. It certainly is. Ed Henry, Sebastian Gorka, good to see you both. Thank you. Good Thank you, Rob.